The phrase line with statistics is a popular term for the manipulation and misrepresentation of data. But this association of the term statistics with dishonesty is unfortunate, because the science of statistics is in fact designed precisely to keep you from lying. More specifically, the framework of statistical hypothesis testing is designed to prevent you from making erroneous conclusions based on random chance or noise. I'm David Robinson, and today we're going to be introducing statistical testing and prediction in R. We'll assume you are familiar with some of the basics of R, including variables, matrices, data frames, and functions, and we'll be using the ggplot2 package, which was discussed in a previous lesson, to make visualizations of our data. Finally, some very basic familiarity with statistics, including the understanding of the concept of a hypothesis test, a p-value, and a confidence interval, would be useful for appreciating the tests we explore. Something we won't be going over is the mathematical formulas or justifications behind any of these statistical tests. These can easily be found in a statistics class or textbook if you're interested in learning more about them, or even doing them by hand. Instead, we'll focus on how these tests can be implemented in R. These are far from the only methods R offers, and once you understand how to apply these basic methods, it's easy to explore others. One essential statistical method is to test for a difference between two samples, or groups. For example, one might see whether a group of patients who were given a medical treatment had better outcomes than a control group. In our examples in this lesson, we're going to be analyzing a question of fuel efficiency as it relates to some aspects of automobile design and performance. We'll work with a data set built into R called MT Cars that comes from a 1974 issue of Motor Trends magazine. Recall that you can load a built-in data set into R with the line data, parentheses, quote, MT Cars. This loads the data into your environment. You can then visualize it with the view function, capital V, view, MT Cars. We see it kind of like a spreadsheet here. You can find out more about this with the help function. That's help MT cars displays information about the data set here. Notice that each line of MT cars represents one model of car, which we can see in the row names. Each column is then one attribute of that car, such as the miles per gallon or fuel efficiency, the number of cylinders the displacement or volume of the car's engine in cubic inches, whether the car has an automatic or manual transmission, and so on. Recall that we can access one of these columns using the dollar sign. For example, MT cars dollar sign MPG extracts the vector of each car's miles per gallon. Let's say we're interested in testing the hypothesis that cars with an automatic transmission use more fuels than cars with a manual transmission. Where the cars of an automatic or manual transmission is found in the AM column, MT cars dollar sign AM. We can see from the help page that zero represents an automatic transmission and one represents a manual transmission. Before we perform a statistical test, is it always a good idea to create a graphical representation? Recall that a box plot compares the distributions of multiple groups, and so is well suited for this task. To do this, first we load the ggplot package. We do that with library ggplot2. Then we can create a box plot with the following line. As with any ggplot2 call, we start with ggplot, open parentheses. Then the data will be plotting, mt cars. Then a mapping of the aesthetics, in this case, uh, transmission on the x-axis and miles per ga gallon on the y-axis. So that's AES on the x-axis factor of AM. Why do we need to turn into a factor? Because ggplot prefers the x-axis of a box plot to be a factor, that is uh, any number, uh, variable that can take one of a finite number of categories as its values, rather than a numeric variable like 0 or 1. On the y-axis, we put miles per gallon. Then we put the type of box plot, which is in this case, geom underscore box plot. Open close parentheses, create the plot. We can form a clear hypothesis from this visualization. It appears that automatic car, uh, transmission cars have a lower miles per gallon and therefore a lower fuel efficiency than manual cars do. But it is possible that this apparent pattern happened by random chance. That is, we, that we just happened to pick a group of automatic cars with low efficiency and a group of manual cars with higher efficiency. 
So to check whether that's the case, we have to use a statistical test. To compare two samples to see if they have different means or averages, statisticians traditionally use a student's t-test. This can be performed in R with the t.test function. That looks like this. t.test, open parentheses, then we put the formula that we're going to be testing. So in this case, that is miles per gallon, that's a response variable, then a tilde. In R, a tilde represents explained by. So this is miles per gallon explained by automatic transmission. Secondly, we give it the data that we're going to be plotting, and that's going to be MT cars. So this is saying, does the miles per gallon depend on whether it's an automatic or manual transmission in the MT cars data set? We get a lot of information from the t-test. Most notably, we get a p-value. That's here. This shows the probability that the test, apparent difference between the two groups could occur by chance. This is a low p-value, so we can be fairly confident there's an actual difference between the groups. We can also see a 95% confidence interval. This interval describes how much lower the miles per gallon is in manual cars than it is in automatic. We can be confident the true difference is somewhere between 3.2 and 11.2. These other values, for instance the t-test statistic, and the number of degrees of freedom used in the test have relevance in the actual mathematical formulation of the test. If you have experience in statistics, these values are worth investigating further. Now you're able to see these results manually, but what if you want to extract it into R into its own variable, for instance, so that you could graph or report it later? Well, first save the entire t-test into a variable. Recall that in R, you can do this by putting at the start of the line tt equals. This assigns the result of the t-test to the variable tt. So now tt contains the actual t-test. If we type tt, we can actually see what's inside it. We can also extract single values out using the dollar sign. For example, tt dollar sign p dot value to extract the p-value. Similarly, we can extract the confidence interval by doing tt dollar sign conf dot int. You can use tab to autocomplete it. Notice that the confidence interval contains the lower bound and the upper bound as a vector, but also the actual confidence level, in this case a 95% confidence interval. You can extract just the lower bound or the upper bound by doing bracket 1 or bracket 2, just like any vector in R. Notice that if you do tt dollar sign and then tab, you can find out a list of all the values you can extract from the t-test object.